There's a new order taking shape in the Middle East. Israel and its Arab neighbors are no longer enemies, and they're not keeping their relationship secret either. The question is, how and why has this unlikely alliance developed? Warming ties between Tel Aviv and the Arab world have been brewing for some time. They're arguably rooted in the 1978 Camp David Accords, when Egypt, the then biggest military force in the region, became the first Arab nation to recognize and establish diplomatic relations with Israel. But since the historic peace deal, Israel has engaged Lebanon in two bloody wars in 1982 and 2006, and continues to occupy Palestinian lands in the Syrian Golan Heights. They continue to build illegal settlements in the West Bank, and have had an effective siege on Gaza since 2006, punctuated by near annual aerial bombardment. So the scars of war are still fresh for many in the region, making recognition of Israel by its Arab neighbors or public relations with Tel Aviv a taboo. In today's post-Arab Spring counter-revolutionary order, things have changed drastically. In the last few weeks, signs of a new era of Arab-Israeli relations have been popping up all over news feeds. On October 25th, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu visited Oman for high-profile talks with Sultan Qaboos bin Said. While Netanyahu was in Oman, Israeli Minister of Culture Miri Regev, known for her provocative and racist statements, attended the International Judo Federation's Grand Slam in Abu Dhabi, where the Israeli national anthem was played for the first time. She was later welcomed by local officials and given a tour of the Sheikh Zayed Grand Mosque. On October 29th, Israeli Communications Minister Ayub Kara also attended a conference in Dubai. And it's not only high-profile meetings, it's public statements and deals. Bahraini Foreign Minister Yusuf bin Alawi recently said, quote, I will say this for the first time. Israel is a state that is present in this region, and we all know this. Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, aka MBS, was also quoted as saying, it is about time the Palestinians take the proposals and agree to come to the negotiations table, or shut up and stop complaining. Reports have also indicated that Saudi Arabia purchased more than $250 million worth of spy equipment from Israel, in addition to buying an Israeli Iron Dome defense system to shield itself against Houthi rebel missile attacks. The upsurge in economic ties is set to increase, as Tel Aviv has also been public about plans to build a railway connecting the Gulf with Israel, dubbed the Hejaz Railway Track. So what has brought about this new order? A source from the Omeni royal court spoke exclusively with TRT World and believed there was one major reason for the new relationship, Iran. Iran and its expansion are the only items on their agenda now. Ties with Israel are for sharing intelligence and cooperating militarily against Iran. This is in keeping with a wider regional shift towards confronting Iran's broadening reach, reflected in the many proxy wars being fought across the Middle East in Yemen, Syria and Iraq, and the support of militants such as Hezbollah in Lebanon. Saudi Arabia, specifically MBS, has been the loudest in opposing this Iranian influence. MBS has even said Iran's supreme leader makes Hitler look good. Because he wants to expand. He wants to create his own project in the Middle East, very much like Hitler, who wanted to expand at the time. The UAE's ambassador to the US also considers the Iranian threat to be, quote, existential. This, of course, mirrors the many times Israel has complained of the threat Iran has posed. And as they say, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. But Iran isn't the only factor uniting Israel and its Arab neighbors. They are both critical of Qatar for its support of Hamas, the Muslim Brotherhood, and its state media network Al Jazeera. They also both back Jared Kushner's Palestine deal, with countries like Saudi Arabia putting pressure on the Palestinian leadership. And so relations that were once defined by secrecy and taboo are now becoming normalized. The question is, will there be a public backlash within the region and across the Muslim world to this new order? Thank you.